What is up, down, and sideways? All you beautiful individuals. It is Lee Guy Mark Eric and Mark here with you beauties for just another casual day of League of Legends. Just peak cinema, nothing to see here between 100 Thieves and Rainbow Seven. Just business as usual, right? Yeah, just a quick little sneaky preview of the Americas next year from Riot. Wow, LCS versus LCS. We'd love to see this, don't we? Yeah, I'd love to see it so competitive to have, uh, you know, two teams at the absolute top of the table. Obviously, the biggest mismatch on paper heading into this. 100 Thieves with the biggest favorites, even more so than PSG over Payne uh, early in this week. And, you know... Game one, you were maybe thinking that, but uh, we'll jump right to the spice here. Spoilers, there shouldn't really have even been a game three, arguably, but that's where we were sitting. And there were some absolutely ludicrous team fights in this third game. You can talk about them being throws back and forth 100% they were in game three, but these team fights were nuts. This was uh, a lot of throws, and this was not necessarily a, a professional baseball game. This was like going down to your local park and seeing the, the rec beer league team playing around and throwing a type of thing. It was ugly, this game three, and I think it was ugly mostly, almost entirely, on the side of 100 Thieves. And we can start with the biggest problem, the biggest uh-oh in this game, and that is the mid lane quit. For a guy that we can go to game one and talk about a phenomenal performance on the Aurora, showing up as a lot of people expected to kind of be the second most powerful mid laner in the playing stage, only behind the incredible veteran in Maple, into game two, where it is a lackluster performance, and it is expanded upon in game three with arguably one of the worst performances I think we have ever seen on the international stage. Yeah, the dip from the Huey performance in Game 1 to the um, Vex. I get the counter pick thing, and okay, but listen. The LeBlanc Kiney here, who isn't exactly the world beater guy you're talking about for R7. He individually had almost a 6k gold lead. Just mid lane on mid lane. I'm honestly surprised Quid had as big an impact as team fights as he did when he's 0-6, 0-7, 0-8. And I think that tributes to why you pick the Vex, because no matter kind of the state and situation, she's going to provide a utility for the team. It's whether that utility is utilized correctly, A, by the person piloting the Vex, and then the rest of the team jumping in on it, making sure that those abilities are getting the effect that you're capitalizing on that, you know, uh, CC, that immobilization that comes through from her abilities, the beer, everything else, that was never the case, never resets for Quid and any of these opportunities that he's going in. And then to top it all off, we come in through with Ayla, who wants to give Quid a run for his money on some of the worst performances we've seen on the international stage. Missing Nautilus hooks left and right, and let me tell you, at least 30% of those ones he missed, if he hit them, they're even worse than missing those hooks the way that he was going for some of those ones in the fights. There is a little bit of, you know, allowance and understanding that, okay, you're going into a composition with a, pretty much everybody's got a dash. Maybe the Nami's the only one that doesn't got it. And everyone's, you know, then on top of all the dashes, you've got clone situations going on with the Wukong and the Wok. All of that pushed aside. You still need to find a way to get it done, especially when you're as favored as much as you are as 100 Thieves. And it never got done. And so many of these crazy team fights end up being like four for five kind of trades. And the only reason they're even that close is because River is trying to drag this team kicking and screaming on the Viego. Shout out to Sniper. He had some good fights as well on the Cassante. But this, the only reason this game lasted 35 plus minutes is because of River. Absolutely. He found a way to make it work for the team, even when there never was really a window to make it work for the team. He was finding them on the Viego and even throughout the rest of this series. I think even game one, two, he was the standout player for 100 Thieves. Arguably, you know, Sniper, maybe a five, a 6.5 out of 10, depending on how uh, generous you want to be on some of these positive plays that he was able to make. There still were mistakes, you know, uh, critical mistakes from him that hurt the team. And then it, it goes even worse when you're looking at guys like Quid, you're looking at Tomo and Alo down in the bottom lane. I don't think had a good performance throughout the entirety of the series as well. This is a rough one for 100 Thieves in the LCS. And such a 
picture perfect ending to describe this series to have Tomo get absolutely gunned down 100 to 0 with the culling while the rest of the team is just walking back and forth watching their jinx get exploded. Uh, well, come on. Man. I don't want to be too hard on him, man. You know that flash is going to come in handy in game four. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there's no game four. It is game three. It's over. He gets it's double done. flashes in the losers against SoftBank. So this, this is not what we mean when we want you to emulate the best ADC from our region double it. This isn't the play that you're supposed to be going for holding the flash. Not good from 100 Thieves. I don't want to take away from this incredible moment for, for R7. This is one that I think all this time of talking about them getting to an international stage and then being blown out of the water by all these teams. I think this is another indication of the progress that minor regions are making to close that gap between them and a major region. Even if you want to slap on the asterisk for the major region for the LCS losing a world spot, which, hey, don't look too bad losing a world spot when uh, you're getting competition like this from the LLA. Yeah, their first ever international best of series win out of uh, LATAM. And, you know, kudos to them, especially that second game. I don't remember a game recently that you've seen that Nocturne Oriana Shockwave work better. Tomo didn't even get to play game two. That is some disgusting technology coming through. Absolutely. A primo combo for the Oriana, the ball delivery system for it. It was instant. Every single time the Nocturne arrived, boom, shockwave, and you're gone. Delete. It didn't matter which of the carries it was, either Quid or Tomo, neither of them getting to play any of these crucial fights for the 100 feet instantly in the favor of R7. And then throughout this series, I think one of the guys that isn't going to be maybe talked about enough is Summit in the top side. I think he obviously did have a couple struggles with Sniper. Sniper getting some of his own moments. But overall, the, throughout the laning phase and then into the team fight, Summit was a massive player for this R7. This whole series really just felt like a microcosm of historically the LCS at Worlds. Maybe Stark. Whoa! Look at him! Damn! Dominant game one, looking clean. Quick, looks like an MVP. They get some resistance in game two. Oh, we're tilted. We're throwing this game. Oh, it's carrying into game three. They just look so tentative and lost, not on the same page. Mentally, it seemed like things completely fell apart by game three. And this is only three games into Worlds. We shouldn't be that mentally fragile, even with a team that has such little international experience. That's where I think that this comes into play, is that lack of international experience, the emotions, everything that can come into it, and how you're able to steal yourself in a series, right? Where you do get that overwhelming first win and you get that resistance, you get that pushback, and now all of a sudden, you gotta go to that game three. It's do or die, you gotta buckle up and get it done. Yeah, you know, it's, it's that flight or flight type of situation. And pretty much for almost all of 100 Thieves, it was the flight response. It was absolutely not the fight that you wanted. This is a rough day for the LCS. There's no way to really sugarcoat it all the way around. Congratulations to R7. This doesn't mean it's all doom and gloom, that it is the end of the world for the LCS. This is not uncharted territory for us, believe it or not. Still got a life to live in the loser's breath. And, you know, 100 Thieves, you could see Sniper after this series did not look in a good state mentally, looked sad, of course. So... Don't flame these guys too hard. I know it's fun to meme on the LCS. Ha ha ha, dear airport run starting early. Look at this, won't even get out of playing safe. But yes, they've got another opportunity to go through that loser's bracket. And we'll see what these young players are made of mentally to be able to bounce back in less than 48 hour turnaround time to get back on the rift and prove themselves that they do actually deserve to be at this international event. R7 got a little bit of history now with who they're going to be playing in that winner's bracket because GAM Esports. This was the one that we were saying, this is close. This is 55-45, 60-40 in favor of GAM, but we're expecting something out of the Hawks. Uh-uh. GAM was all business on the day, and especially Kiaya and Levi. This new 14.18 meta, they're curving it up right away, even though you know, uh, the ba Softhawk Banks, they got Ziggs, Bot, Lucian mid still. We got an AD carry mid lane matchup, but an Aurora Shivana topside. Oh, baby. Yes, sirree. And we got to see absolutely 
throughout this series uh, that Aurora is the champion we thought she was. A lot of people saying even with, excuse me, the nerfs that were going to be coming through, look for her on the 100% pick ban type of situation. Bring back the global ban. That's that's what everyone's saying. <laughs> At this point, I might be in favor of that type of situation. Aurora all over the place still seeing that ultimate yet incredible value of being able to keep people in that type of uh, containment zone for that little bit of time. Let your teammates catch up, let abilities go off cooldown, all sorts of things, getting you into that moment, getting the prime for you to take the team fight. And then add on top of it that Shivana that you talked about, the whole Levi in the jungle. This is one of those ones where I've been wondering when someone was going to bust out this technology again. I know we had a couple years ago. Mythic items come through. She's incredibly strong with demonic essence, crazy tanky. Gets knocked down. Items tuned a little bit, and she gets tuned a little bit. Didn't really touch her ultimate situation, and I think that was one of the ones that didn't go, go really noticed on what was so strong about her. Because you're getting this ultimate back lickety split as soon as you're hitting level six and unlocking it in the situation. Well, you know, one, one and a half jungle camps. You're right back to having that ult charge. I think even in this one, you saw taking out a ward. Had it over a, a third filled back to the full level. That was incredible. Fully utilized by this gam squad. Yeah, I, the double tap on wards, even just walking around, it was incredible how quickly it was ticking back up. And incredible how much damage Levi was doing. There's a reason this was banned against him pretty often in the VCS. Now, case in point, uh, you see why. And yeah, the Aurora in the second game is really where Ki Kiaia popped off on it and uh aside from the start of game one where both easy love and elio were uh kind of inting in the 2v2 just disrespectful recalls disrespectful walking forward when their partner's not there uh that was bad but outside of that this was all gam all day and easy love had some of the best deadly flourishes on a gym that i have seen in a pro game oh bro how how infuriating is that to be just hit from a mile away. Six screens, like, yeah. I'm out of here, nothing, you don't got anything to stun me up. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned in place and I'm dead. And that's one of those situations you feel bad for him, but you gotta give credit and yes, it, you know, a little bit sloppy at times with easy love, but hey, picking up a quadruple kill on Jin, I'm counting that as a penta. That's good enough for me. Yeah, that's that's like what you want on the bingo card for Jin. It's better than the penta, really, but... Um, Usually we're accustomed to GAM. It feels like the last couple of years at these international events, it's a slow start. They're dropping games, maybe even a series to a team that they should beat, but this was not even 60 minutes. This was pure domination, vintage of Vietnamese gameplay. They were still, they weren't at a kill per minute, but you know, they got almost 20 kills in both of these games and they were fully in control, basically from start to finish in this series. I think the most impressive thing for me about this one with GAM is, you know, as you laid out, it's not that slow start, of course, is an important one that we have seen and you know, has unfortunately been the downfall, really, of the last couple of times GAM has made it to the international stage. But the big one for me in this, not really a gimmick type of thing coming through in the composition. Yes, you can go a little bit unpredictable in saying that getting that, you know, Shivana to appear in this type of situation, you already laid out, we've seen that in the past from Levi and yes there is the Aurora and what she is but it's not really the same type of gimmick that we have known Gam to have to rely on to bring that playing field closer to the beat in the middle not the case it was overwhelming power and control from this team right from the get-go and you know makes for a terrifying matchup now going forward for Gam when they're at this level a bit disappointing as great as Gam looked you were expecting a little bit more uh, out of the soft banks hawk especially you know evie on the rumble i can't there wasn't even a single impactful equalizer that i remember in this series no and that was kind of the problem i think a lot of people had identifying rumble into this one one of the champions again knocked down quite considerably in the last couple of patches before we got to this one evie someone we know who is going to say damn b the patch notes i'm playing what i'm comfortable with what i know and what i want to do didn't work out this time around for the SoftBank Hawks. It, it, this and combined with the 100 Thieves matchup leads us into a very unique and interesting situation as we move forward into the winners and losers brackets. I think right now you've got a squad like GAM and R7. Either one of them are guaranteed. One of those two is guaranteed to be going to the play-in stage. That's what's crazy is now it feels like the first round is when 
Worlds really starts now. Because now you have A, elimination matches, and B, qualification matches. And as you mentioned, that GAM R7. Obviously, R7 winning that would be insane. It would be the first time that a LATAM team's getting through the play-in stage to go to the main draw since the format changed, I don't know, like a decade ago now. Uh, basically, GAM is obviously very familiar with that main event and will still be the big favorites uh, in that matchup. But when you look at the other matchups heading forward, woo, they get real spicy. You start with that other winner's matchup now, MDK versus PSG, who I feel like heading into this event, you had PSG probably significantly far ahead of MDK, and then you saw MDK against Vikings dominate PSG struggles. I still think PSG should be favorites, but it's a little closer now. It wasn't clean enough from the Mad Lions to get me to, to say that it's fully uh, matched up, but it certainly was more of a struggle for PSG, even you know when you look at the second and third game being more in their favor. You still got to say that getting that type of test, getting that type of scare, from pain brings you more in line where I saw the Mad Lions. And I think this one is going to be the brawl that we have been waiting for. I am very excited to see how this series plays out. Of course, the experience on the side of PSG up against those rookies with El Yoya on the side of Mad Lions Koi. And again, you laid it out. This is for the marbles. This is where it really matters now. You're getting yourself locked into that spot to go for the play-in stage, or you're setting yourself down. And the loser of this Mad Lions Koi PSG game, guess what? They're facing the winner of 100 Thieves versus the Saw Bangkok. And I think what's important is whoever, whatever level these guys are at, you'll realize, okay, even if you lose, you're still the favorites to be coming out as one of these other seeds when we do get into that play-in stage. But uh, the loser side, obviously, incredibly high stakes. And this is where 100 Thieves versus those soft bank hawks, again, as we just alluded to, depends on the mental fortitude that Golden Glue can get for the boys because I, I, I would worry for 100 Thieves Mental and the LCS if they lose this series. There's still plenty of opportunity to bounce back and redeem yourself, but if you lose to R7 and then the SoftBank Hawks, honestly, probably the two weakest teams in the playing stage, whew, that's a lot of flame. And I'll be honest with you, the one saving grace for that for 100 Thieves is your boy, Golden Glue. The Golden Boy, the Vault Boy himself in the coaching staff. I think that is going to be a key part of getting this 100 Thieves rebound that they need to have for their mental focus into this next series against the SoftBank Hawks. This is a player, right? A guy who is a former player. He's gone through a bunch of different trials and tribulations on his own and is infamous in the LCS scene for having that positive mentality, being able to get you to smile, keep your vibes up type of situation. He's absolutely the guy that I want to sit these guys down and say, yes, absolutely. We can go over the bad. We can go over the disappointments, all these type of things you got to find a way to believe in yourself reset focus on what you are capable of and head into that next match with a clear head he's the guy i trust for the job and i think no one is going to be angrier than quinn in his individual performance from vex everyone was hyping up his incredible 45 and 0 solo queue run that he was doing at eu west he looks great in that first matchup uh, of the day i'm expecting a full bounce back from him on whatever pick he gets comfortable with and we got to get sniper off Cassante. three straight games of Cassante today i know he's played a lot of it but it feels like and you heard brippo talk about this with him play what's comfortable for you i want to see a pick that's whatever his jack something that's not just playing it safe on the Cassante. let this guy show his potential yeah, I think that one of the biggest problems for that is, you know, of course, you want to take that safety route is what you're thinking that you're going with with that Cassante. But you got to be able to roll that dice a little. You got to live with the fact that if, you know, you're taking some of these champions that Sniper is more comfortable on, able to pop off a little bit more on. Yes, you do have that risk that it goes south, it goes sideways, all those type of things. That's absolutely nothing to blink at. But you got to consider what that upside is and how that unlocks your prime potential as a team. I think that's a key part of it for 100 Thieves. And then when you talk about Quinn, no one, yes, is going to be more disappointed than himself. This is someone that I think needs to get, uh, you know, a little bit of ego mojo going at this type of point to go, you know what? 
I have proved myself at the very least at the LCS level, I should be able to handle myself and come in here as a big swinger at this type of event in the play-in stage. He's got to show up and be able to deliver that for 100 Thieves, a key part of what makes them work. One thing I want to be careful with him compared to someone like Sniper getting that comfort and, and the risk that you take, he can't be pushing himself to do too much, right? You can't go into this situation in this next matchup and go, I really let down my teammates. I let down the LCS. I let down myself and my image, all these type of things. First pick me, Riven this. blind. Riven blind. Let's go. I'd be okay with that for Sniper, but certainly not maybe for Quid in this situation. you got to be careful with that. That's one of those things that I'd be examining on kind of the mental side of him heading into the mix. And at least if, you, you know, historically you go back, remember it was just last year, Team BDS, they dropped their opener to Team Wales, the second seed from the BCS, and then BDS proceeded to 2-0, 2-0 their way out and into the main stage at World. So it's not fully the death of 100 Thieves yet. Uh, that final loser's matchup is, of course, Payne versus Vikings Esports. And after these matches happen, I think we both said Payne should probably be the favorites here. Yes, Payne should be the favorites here, what they showed against PSG. They need to be able to keep that type of momentum from that first game. And that focus is what they need. For Viking, it really has to be that bounce back. We really need to see them show what they've got yes you had enough to make it somewhat interesting at times get a little poke here against the mad lines but never enough to fully make it that series that's what we got to see from them you got to be able to look at what you saw from the gigabyte marines and say hey you know, we, we've gone toe to toe with them we've got that type of energy too you got to bring that to the rip in your next matchup against pink and i still feel like uh you know mdk and psg both probably uh going to be seeds to get through and hopefully we get gam to go through but this is this is just the beginning and this r7 matchup again just highlights how insane the world championship can be and how impossible it is to accurately predict your pick -ums, as most people's are probably already busted from 100 thieves losing but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beauties thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip